I guess going back to the Hoddle Knot case, apparently this Hoddle Knot guy was friends with the Lightning Lab guys, uh, one of the engineers. Um, and they, the Lightning Labs was listed on the WEF, the World Economic uh, Forum website. Yep. Hoddle Knot then goes on to promote the fake Toshi psyops on uh, hashtag Twitter threads. Do you think this whole fake Toshi psyop um, is was orchestrated by globalist puppeteers to conceal and distract the real Bitcoin, the Phoenix, discredit Satoshi, co-opt the system, and eventually create legal precedences until they launch uh, after global regulations and and all that. Do you think this is? Do you think Hoddle Knot is a is an implant or a plant? Maybe. Um, you know, so the the first part of your question, like, do I think that there is? like attempting to undermine Satoshi so that they can get their roots planted. I, I do think that's absolutely the case. Um, Lightning Labs and Blockstream and, and you know, all those people on that side very much want their patents, their stuff to be the established official version of what the world uses in the future. I, I think that's crystal clear. Um, I also know for a fact that like they do pay for lots and lots of uh, you know, influencers and that kind of stuff. Like, so, you know, your various podcasts uh, on the small blocker side, like look who sponsors them. And then if you follow that money, it's it's all very clear. It all kind of filters to the same couple of places. And then those couple of places absolutely filter up to like, oh, okay, they are a World Economic Forum member. Like, oh, interesting. This person worked in like the Clinton White House. <laughs> you know, So you get very, uh, very weird connections as you continue to follow the money there. As for Hodel not specifically, I don't know. I, I think um, I think in lots of cases you have uh, people that get into a thing and they start to get a little bit popular for some reason, and then they don't want that popularity to go away. And so I think he specifically got popular for being kind of a toxic prick. And so it makes you want to be a more toxic prick because that's the thing that gave you feedback. Like that's a very basic human uh, dopamine hit kind of thing. Um, and he doesn't strike me as particularly, uh, bright, I guess, you know, I've, I've sat in a room with him for a few weeks now. He really, really doesn't like me. Um, I'm, I'm kind of whatever I I'd be friends with anybody who'd shake my hand. And, uh, he specifically refused to shake my hand actually, but, um, you know, it was a stressful time for him. So I, I don't blame him, but, uh, but at, at the closing argument of the trial, for example, I, you know, his, his lawyers did a really good job. They had really good closing arguments I, and they finished strong and then they ultimately won the case. But, uh, at the end, you know, I went and congratulated his attorneys as somebody who covered the whole case as, Hey guys, strong finish and reached out, shook both of his attorneys hands. And then I reached out and, and said, Hey man, like just kind of a, like, Hey, good job. Like this was a, this was a good sparring match essentially. And he's like, looked at me with just absolute disgust that I would attempt to shake his hand. And so um, it just kind of shows where his head is at as a person. Um, I also think it was really interesting. Uh, he was such a wooden person in court, like very little personality, which Norwegians are kind of stoic anyway. So I don't want to imply too much about his stoicism, but it's interesting because the thing that made him sort of lose composure and lose control uh, uh, amid everything, there was lots of emotional moments and stuff, but it was listening to Craig talk passionately about Bitcoin. So as Craig would be talking about, oh, here's why it mattered to me. Like Hodel not just had this very, like he couldn't help but laugh in the way that like a bully might laugh at the nerdy kids slipping and falling on the floor in school. It was a very sort of uh, immature school bully attitude where he's literally like <clears throat> just like losing his composure and looking like a 12 year old who would be asked to like, Hey, keep it down in class kind of thing. <laughs> so, so I think that's, it said a lot about his personality. And, and I think it's, it's more than likely just that. I think he's just kind of a, a guy that liked to be uh, unpleasant on the internet. And so, I mean, he's, he's a useful uh, a useful idiot, I guess, is the best way to put it. But now he worked, or last I checked, I don't know that he's still there, but he's working at a giant uh, 
investment firm in Norway now. He was a school teacher two or three years ago, uh, which you know brings up all kinds of other, uh, you know, this kind of sort of toxic bully guy being a school teacher. But uh, now he's working at a, a major investment firm, like a big one. They're kind of the the rock star venture capital uh, group. Um, and he's like Blockstream's account manager or something at this place. So he's he's noodled himself into a pretty powerful position. But yeah. I, I don't know if any of that was pre-planned in the background. Yeah, it just doesn't add up. You know, first he's a teacher, then he's, you know, in the tech space, and then now he's in a multi-million dollar firm. Like, yeah, multi-billion, frankly. Yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah very strange. Um, 